guide and, uh, and our navigator. Um, so uh, kind of take us through all the, the ins and outs of, uh, of context uh, aware computing. And I, and I really can't, you know, can't think of anyone better prepared to do this. It's like, you know, you've been working towards this your whole life. And so now you've got rapt audience and, and they're ready to learn the ins and outs of, of context awareness. So are you ready to do that? Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, we've talked about context. We thought that context is really everything from what you're doing, who you're with. Oh, I like that. Context is everything. Keep going. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's like, you know, it really needs to understand, you know, where you are, you know, what the environment around you is the weather, you know, your calendar, all of that information, right? But really, if you think about context, like, you know, let's start with sensing, since it's really at the core of what context awareness is all about. Right. So... You want to drive? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay, so devices today, uh, basically, we're seeing a lot of sensing getting integrated into these devices, right? And, you know, it's really simple sensing. You can understand that, you know, the phone is next to your ear, or you're holding it this way, or, you know, right. where you are, and so on. Sure. But, you know, even though these are really simple things, it generated quite a bit of excitement in the market, right? And then, once these APIs were opened up to developers, many new applications emerged, right? And, and these actually become even more exciting. Sure. So, you know, this clearly is just basically just connect the circle. Okay. So let's see, you know, let's move kind of beyond the notion of device context and start seeing what, you know, kind of trying to... Yeah, getting, getting beyond the basics. Exactly. Right. So the first example that we have here is really about using the accelerometer mm -hmm. to infer what the personal context is. Okay, so right? not just sort of... Not just devices, how holding right? everything the devices. All right, but something about the person who's actually exactly. interacting. Exactly. So the first example that we're going to start with is essentially, you know, really trying to talk to the problem of fall with, you know, adults over 65. Right, which is so a big problem. It's a big problem, you know, more than one third of, of adults over the age of 65 actually fall and end up, you know, in many cases in hospitals because yeah. of that. So can we see it? Absolutely. Let's go over. All right. So Jigna is going to walk us through this example. Hi, Jigna. Uh, so, like Lama said, falls is the number one reason why uh, elderly over 65 are, you know, get a go-to hospital emergency that has trauma. What I have here today is uh, our shimmer sensors. These are wearable, and I believe you're wearing a couple today. Yes. Uh, okay. Got a camera on this. Here are my here's my right. shimmer. Okay. There's one there. There's there's one over here. The latest in wearable computing fashion for fashionistas out there. So as you can see, you're, you know, you're going about uninterrupted through the keynote wearing those sensors. Right. Uh, what these sensors do is essentially measure your stride time and your swing time. Um, the stride time and swing time are the two most important variables in human locomotion. And these are the variables that are used to measure your walking speed and your running speed. Um, so this is me walking around on stage. Right. So I took this, I took this data while you were walking around on stage. <laughs> Um, I'm sure we're going from that right now. <laughs> I don't know what we could have done. Well, at least I didn't fall down yet. So that's it. Right. So medical researchers have found that uh, you know irregularities in your gait or poor movements you know are excellent to identify any risk of falling if identified you. Mm -hmm. Right. And for taking falls. And the cool thing is that you know as we start sort of looking at this over time, then we can really start seeing these things kind of emerging. Your increased risk. Of oh, that and then it provides an early work. So if you're able to collect a lot of data over exactly. a period of time, you really get a lot more insight. Exactly. And you can't do that at the doctor's office. If you keep across the exam room, you're not going to do it. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so basically, you know, we, over the last, um, you know, multiple days at IBF, we've seen a lot of examples of. You know, personalized TV experience, you know, understanding what the user care, you know, to watch and sort of trying to tailor the content accordingly. Yeah, there were a lot of people in the exactly. TV exhibit. Exactly. So one of the next examples of context awareness that I want to show you has to do with really trying to make that happen. So to make that happen, you really need to understand, you know, who's actually watching the TV so that we can start, you know, understanding what specific shows we're actually going through and then based on that create these. And I gotta put some big camera on top of uh -huh. the So let's let's see that. So actually we're gonna walk over here to okay. Jeff, who's okay. in the living room. Okay. And Should I Jeff, sit down? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. Hi and Jeff. Jeff will show us yeah. his remote control. So what we have here is a uh, remote control that um, 
enhances the Smart TV experience. It allows us to distinguish uh, who is wielding the remote control based on the way they hold it and lets you provide a personalized experience for the television. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a try here. So, um, what we have here is we have a, a small sensor pack on, that we've aug augmented on the remote control that um, Kind of like the, the shimmers. Kind of like the shimmers still that you have on your sock there. It lets you us understand how, how you push the buttons and how you wield the remote control. And then as soon as you pick up the remote and you start surfing the television, it uh, you can see that you know this is the data that we trained on before. So you can see that it's recognized me as person one and that I am uh, the one using the remote that's provided me some uh, little personalized recommendations. Where did, where did there. You go? Uh, this is uh, from our friends at CBS. They provided us some great new content here for uh, thanks to their upcoming season here. So um, let's have you can give it a try here. Okay. Well, let's see. All right. Oh. Okay. So it's recognized me. Now, how's it doing that? Well, it, uh, it, it recognizes based on the motions of your hand and the, yeah. the way that you uh, do the remote control. It actually uses something called unsupervised learning, so it's learning all the time in the background. So it's learning right now? Yep, you bet. Uh, whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't feel anything. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's working in the background. It's watching just the same way as when you were walking before with the, the shimmer. It's looking at your behavior and all right. understanding. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah, no problem. Fantastic. Yeah. When do I get one of these? <laughs> no, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so, you know, we've talked about multiple examples. Uh -huh. And really, what I want to kind of walk you through now is what's really under the hood. How do we actually do this, right? So we talked about this notion of starting the simple data, right, that comes straight from the sensors. Right. And then, you know, we do some inference on this data, and what we're really trying to understand is what classes we want to sort of get out of them. So let's give you an example. So this is, you know, this is when people talk about sensing and sense making. We're going to put that together. Exactly. Okay. So let's let's walk through the example of an accelerometer. Right. So you might have an accelerometer data. You get that through the system. And they have two. Exactly. You extract some features out of that accelerometer data. So let's say, for example, the minimum or the maximum of the signal or something like that. Right. And then we feed that into an inference algorithm. And this inference algorithm, like, you know, in the case of, you know, the, the TV remote was like a support vector machine, okay. right? That inference algorithm then would essentially generate the class in the specific case, which is who the person was actually holding the remote. Right. Okay. And the cool thing about this is that that really, that kind of inference pipeline extends across multiple types of sensors and multiple types of classes. So that, that's a model, that's a paradigm for doing this. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, you can think of many other examples like, for example, inferring emotional state from your GSR and heart rate. Okay. And that's actually Getting pretty into cool. It's actually, you know, territory. kind of along the lines of a lie detector, if you can think of. Oh, great. Now you make me feel <laughs> a heck of a lot better. <laughs> and then, you know, the same thing kind of applies to audio, right? You can sure. think of, you know, what's playing in the background. Is it music or is there somebody talking in the background and so on? Right. Or even camera, which ultimately is a great source of, you know, rich context where you can start seeing who's, for example, in front of the camera. And <laughs> right. <clears throat> okay. So we've got this, we've got this model. Yeah, and then, so basically, you know, really kind of the, the next step, I mean, you know, hard sensing, which is everything that we've talked about so far, is really sensor data that actually we infer from other software. Right. But really, that's not really this, you know, everything, right? right? There's a lot of other soft sensing information that's very relevant, right? right? So we saw some of that in the, in the vacation season. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, you know, you can get information from your calendar, right? I right. can know from your calendar that you're at home. Right. Something I can sort of understand where you know what meetings are where coming I'm up. I can understand what's going on in the world. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming through you know applications that you're running, you know what you're browsing, etc. That we use. Right. So what we actually end up doing here is essentially fusing information from that hard sensor plus all of these you know soft Soft sensors. Things. And then what happens is we get a richer context and improve the accuracy. Because what you really don't want to do is be very dependent on a single source of information. And the soft sensors, I mean, they can include things like social networks and, you know, like exactly. preferences. Exactly. Like 